Okay, better get started now. So, um, um, I'm Sander van der Burg. I'm a PhD student uh, and also an active, active uh, contributor for the NixOS project, which is a particular uh, Linux distribution using a package manager called Nix. In this presentation, I, uh, I'm not going to uh, explain the general idea of NixOS, but a, a particular useful application of NixOS, which you can use for declarative deployment and testing. So as you may know, there are uh, many kinds of Linux distributions available, uh, like uh, the, the, the famous ones like uh, Debian, Fedora, uh, Ubuntu, and SUSE. Um, all those distributions have uh, some similar goals, but also uh, uh, their own goals, and also some technical differences, like the package manager which is being used. So uh, for instance, the Fedora package manager, Fedora uses the RPM package manager, Debian has its own nice packet manager. Slackware has some shell script. Um, and also, um, the goals uh, typically differ. Like the DSL Linux distribution is, uh, is developed for uh, systems with a small disk space uh, footprint. And we, of course, also have NixOS, and that's what I'm going to tell you about in this talk. So this pre presentation is also about software deployment and um, yeah, to avoid misconceptions. Uh, uh, this is the meaning of what software deployment means. So that's basically all the ac activities that make a software system available for use. And that's, uh, well, typically for uh, Linux users, this is installing a, your favorite Linux distribution with uh, the package, packages that you want. You may also need to adapt or tweak some configuration files, like uh, if, if you want to run a web server, you have to modify your Apache configuration. Uh, maybe you need to install some custom pieces of software, like your game, your favorite games. Uh, and you may also need to upgrade the system, uh, uh, which in some cases uh, could take quite some effort. Um, the deployment process also um, uh, are also performed in various scenarios. So you, uh, in most cases, you just install a single machine, just your workstation or your laptop, or maybe your, your mobile device. So that's basically installing your di distribution, your desktop, your favorite uh, end-user applications, and maybe uh, yeah, you have to tweak your uh, some configuration files. The deployment is also typically done in uh, in, in, dis in, dis in large distributed environments like data centers. So in data centers, you maybe have hundreds of machines available, which must be managed uh, simultaneously. And also, machines are connected and also maybe dependent on each other. So, for instance, if you're hosting some kind of web application uh, uh, cluster, maybe some uh, web service is connected to a database server or an application server has some load balancers. Uh, uh, on which it's dependent. And such environments are even harder to, uh, to manage than uh, single installations. And deployment also uh, happens in uh, virtual environments. Uh, so so in, in case you want to try out some new Linux distribution or maybe uh, a package that could harm your system, uh, you pr preferably want to use virtual machines uh, uh, because they basically uh, prevent that your host system is being messed up. And um, installing virtual machines also takes some effort. So as you may know, um, deployment on a single machine is already a very tough process. It, it takes some time to, uh, to <coughs> configure your Linux distributions, install all the packages that you want, uh, tune all the configuration files. And upgrading is even dangerous in some cases. So, uh, for instance, if you update a critical component on your system, and in the middle your system crashes, uh, then it's still the question whether your system is still bootable after that. Um, deploying a distributed environment is even harder, because uh, uh, machines are interconnected with each other and have dependencies on each other. If something breaks, then maybe uh, your whole web application environment breaks, and then you're basically uh, not able to do, uh, um, to do the things that you want with your web applications. So for instance, with a, with a website like Amazon, it's just basically a very, a very huge problem. And also, uh, if you want to upgrade a distributed environment, in many cases, large downtimes may occur. So maybe you have to shut down certain services, um, and maybe some dependencies, and while you're upgrading, maybe your web application uh, 
environment isn't uh, working properly anymore. And the deployment of virtual machines is equally hard. So uh, except that you don't have to manage your own hardware, you still need to install those virtual machines with uh, the right packages and the right configuration files. And because uh, installing virtual machines is also a very tough process, people usually um, don't perform uh, system integration tests frequently because it's so much work to do. Um, so so in, in many cases people save the testing work uh, for the end instead of doing it while uh, they are developing a particular system. So in this talk uh, I will talk about NixOS and uh, yeah, well, NixOS we can deal with those issues. And, um, and, and yeah, NixOS is, just, is, is um, uh, a Linux distribution using the Nix package manager, which has some dis distinct features compared to a uh, regular uh, package manager, like uh, RPM or the Debian package manager. So the main idea of the Nix package manager is that we store all packages in isolation from each other. And we can do this because every uh, package has a unique file name in so-called Nix store. So in this slide, for instance, we have a Firefox package, uh, uh, which has a very strange path name. And that, uh, so the first part in the path name is a hash code. And that hash code is derived from all build time dependencies used to build that particular com component. And those build time dependencies are, well, the source itself, but also some libraries that are being used, also the compiler and build scripts and so on. So for instance, if I would compile Firefox with a different version of GCC, I will also get a different hash code. And because I have a different hash code and a unique file name, I can safely store multiple variants of the same components next to each other without interference. And in regular Linux distributions like RPM, you can do this uh, very easily. So then you have to uh, give some strange parameter to your configure script in order to to be sure that, uh, that your new variant is stored somewhere else. And Nix Package Manager has a formalism to do this for you. Um, so in the Nix Package Manager, you use Nix expressions. So we have our own uh, purely functional language, which you can uh, use to describe how packages are built from source code. <laughs> and in this slide, I have an example showing uh, an expression for uh, OpenSSH, a secure uh, shell server. So basically what we do in this expression is, uh, so essentially this, this expression is a function. Uh, so, uh, so this line over here is basically the function header, uh, which takes some arguments. So in this case, these are build time dependencies. Uh, so in order to build uh, OpenSSH, you need the OpenSSL library, the Z lib library for compression. Um, and we, are, we also have two special components. So in the body, we call the make derivation function, which means that we, uh, well, that's basically the next way of saying we want to build something from source code. Uh, and the name is uh, a simple attribute which ends up in your Nix store uh, component name. Uh, we use the fetch URL argument to download the OpenSSH source code from some location uh, from the web. And finally, we provide some build instructions which describe how to build uh, OpenSSH from source code. Um, okay, so this expression basically says, okay, this is my recipe to build a component, but we still cannot use this expression directly to, to perform the actual build. That's because uh, we still have to provide those function arguments uh, uh, so that we know which version of OpenSSL we want to use and which uh, version of Zlib we want to use. And that's basically done in this expression. Next slide. So uh, uh, in this expression, uh, uh, so here we make a, f a function call to the expression I showed in the, in the previous uh, slide. So here we call the OpenSSH build function with the right function arguments like OpenSSL and Zlib. And as you can see, also all the other dependencies like OpenSSL itself is also composed in this expression, and also refers to some Nix expression which builds OpenSSL from the source code. And also all the other dependencies, all up to glibc, are defined in this model. And Nix can use that model to, uh, to build a package. So for instance, by um, executing a command like this, the Nix end command, you can install a particular package. So if you uh, type the, the, the command line instruction here, then it will install OpenSSH in your user environment. And because 
we use the Nix package manager to build this, also the OpenSSH build result is stored in the Nix store. And also has a hash code in its path name, derived from all the build time dependencies like the OpenSSL variant it's using, the Zlib variant it's using. And that's why uh, you know, we can sa safely install and store uh, multiple var variants next to each other and use them without uh, any danger. So NixOS, you're basically the complete system, is managed by the Nix pack package manager. So also the Linux kernel and also configuration files like your Apache web server configuration, the secure shell configuration, are managed in the Nix store. So they all have a hash code, are stored safely in isolation from each other. And because we store everything in the Nix store, we don't have um, directories such as slash lib and slash user which you usually found in regular Linux distributions like uh, Fedora and Debian. Um, NixOS only has a minimal slash bin and slash etc direct directory. So in the screenshot, for instance, you see that uh, the slash bin directory only contains a symlink called uh, sh, which is a symlink to the bash shell. And well, basically, we need a shell in that location because the, the system function in glibc requires it. But that's the only reason why we have a shell symlink in slash bin. Uh, for the rest, the slash bin directory is entirely empty. Um, and in slash etsy, we need to store some shared configuration files like uh, the etsy host and etsy password files for user account. But that's basically it. So uh, you don't have to store your MySQL, your Apache web server configuration slash etsy. It's all being stored in the next one. Well, I think that this won't sound so surprising to you that uh, everything is stored in the Nix store, but uh, NixOS is more than, di uh, than just a distribution using the Nix package manager. So in NixOS, the idea is that, is that instead of manually uh, installing packages, manually editing configuration files, you uh, basically build your system from a single configuration file or that declarative specification. So in this slide, um, uh, uh, yeah, this is basically the configuration I'm using now for my laptop. Uh, I, I left some uh, useless options out. And in this model I also capture properties like uh, the, group file, the group device that, uh, that's used. Also some file system settings like the, the root partition, uh, the swap partition. Also some system services like I want to run a secure shell server and I want to use an X server. In this case, the X server is pre-configured to boot into KDE4, uh, but you can also use different window managers if you like. Uh, and I also want to use some user software. So, uh, for instance, I want the Firefox web browser and uh, the Midnight Commander uh, available for use. And by using a specification like this and running uh, the NixOS rebuild command or the NixOS install command, you can build a complete uh, configuration from a single declarative specification I've shown in the, in the previous slide. Uh, so, uh, so Nix will, will then build all the packages, also all the configuration files, and also stores them in the Nix store with a hash code, uh, so that they don't interfere with each other. Uh, and that's why uh, upgrades are also almost atomic on, on Nix. So there are no files being overwritten uh, during an upgrade. <laughs> Uh, or removed, so I can also uh, switch back to any configuration uh, I have built uh, previously. So in Nix, you don't remove packages manually, but you use some kind of garbage collector which decides whether a package is still in use or not, and then it will safely remove everything. So this is the, the bootloader that NixOS uses, and as you can see, uh, except for the default configuration, you can also uh, pick any previous configuration that you have built before, and you can instantly boot into the previous uh, configuration uh, that's not uh, garbage collected yet. And you can also switch at runtime, by the way. Are these all different kernels, Sam? Uh, well, in this case, it's the, the, the same kernel version, but you can also switch between different kernel versions, yeah. But the kernel itself, is it, is it separate? Um, well, the kernel is also stored like ordinary packages in, in the Nix store with some hash code. And, uh, okay. It uses the same approach, basically. Mm -hmm. That's why you can also safely switch between uh, various uh, versions of kernels. It's also possible. So, um, well, NixOS has some good deployment properties for single systems. Um, 
So it's interesting to see uh, whether we can we can expand these uh, these these mechanisms to distributed systems. So. Because uh, in many uh, cases, like web application environments, you have a whole network of machines to manage instead of just a single machine. So as a motivating example, I will use the, the track. So uh, some of you may know track. It's basically a web-based management system for the software projects. So, uh, so with tracks, you have um, access to your subversion repository. You can also define tickets, uh, bugs, and so on. And track uh, can be deployed in a distributed environment. So, uh, for instance, uh, you can have a separate subversion server, a separate database server, a separate web server, uh, which can be connected to each other. Uh, so, uh, in, in, in this case, you, you may want to deploy a track uh, on three separate machines instead of a single machine. And with NixOS, you can also capture a, a network of NixOS configurations dealing with this. So uh, in, in this slide, I show a particular example uh, representing the track example. So um, essentially, the, the, the format of this configuration file is the same as an ordinary NixOS configuration, except that I use various attributes, uh, each specifying a particular target in the network. So actually, so here I have three separate NixOS configurations, one for a storage server, storing subversion repositories, one for a PostgreSQL uh, database, and one for a web server uh, which provides access to end users. With the NixOS deploy network uh, command line instruction, you can also deploy a network of machines from just one single specification capturing uh, the, the network of machines and their properties. Um, so what basically the NixOS deploy command do does is it will first try to build all the system configurations by the Nix package manager. Again, it will use the hashing trick to prevent that files interfere with each other, so you can safely store all the, the, the configurations in the host Nix store next to each other. After all configurations are built, then, then they are transferred to all uh, target machines in the network. And this is usually a very efficient process, so, uh, so if some particular component within hash code already exists on the target machine, we don't have to copy it again, because we know of the hashing trick that the, the, if a component with that particular hash code already exists, we don't have to transfer it anymore, because it's exactly the same. And it's also a safe process, so because we uh, store everything in isolation in mixed order. While upgrading, uh, the existing configuration is not affected, so if, if my machine would crash during the upgrade, uh, the configuration still is exactly uh, what it used to be, instead of uh, some files that are being overwritten or corrupted. And after all the components are transferred, then we have to activate the configuration. So basically, uh, if a web service is installed, then we have to activate the web server, also the database server. And in this phase, failures may occur, but uh, this time window is as short as possible. And uh, so if failure occurs, then we have to do a rollback. But a rollback is usually a very cheap operation because your old configuration is still stored in the Nix store, so we can switch back to any configuration almost instantly. Um, yeah, so uh, you can use a network specification to deploy physical machines. But we also have extended NixOS to use the same specification for the deployment of the network of virtual machines. Uh, so uh, if you use the NixOS build VMS command line instruction instead of uh, NixOS deploy network, then uh, a network of Kimu virtual machines is generated, which you can uh, launch by executing a script uh, in the build result. Uh, and another nice thing about this uh, to point out is that we don't create disk images for, the, for those virtual machines. Instead, we mount the Nix store of the host system. Because basically, uh, all the configurations are already on the Nix store, and we use the hashing scheme to store everything in isolation from each other. So, why do you have to copy everything again while well, you can access them from, um, by a network file system on your host system? Um, so, yeah, okay, this is what I already told. Uh, uh, if you compare this approach to regular distributions, uh, in which you don't have uh, a Nix store using hash codes to isolate components, this is very hard to do. So you can just mount your host file system 
uh, and, and uh, access those components because um, uh, they may differ from each other and, and you're not sure whether uh, a particular library variant on your host system uh, is suitable to run on, on a, a particular guest machine. So here I have, a, uh, I have a screenshot uh, showing the track example. So uh, uh, here I, I've used the network model I've shown earlier to generate a network of four virtual machines. So I also included a client virtual machine running a web browser in it for convenience. Uh, and I opened the entry page of a particular project. And you can deploy a virtual network like this by uh, a single model specifying a single expression and using a single command line instruction basically. Then the last feature is uh, testing. So, uh, uh, so let's say you have a network of virtual machines. Uh, why shouldn't you use it for automa performing automatic test cases? So in NixOS we have implemented a Perl test driver, which you can use to, uh, to write uh, test cases, uh, like uh, unit tests, but then for a network of virtual machines. So in this particular example, uh, well, we do various things. So, uh, Basically, we create a PostgreSQL database for a particular track environment. Um, we also create a subvert repository, uh, add another track project, uh, and then uh, finally we uh, launch an X session. Also launch a, uh, a Conqueror web browser to see whether the, the entry page is accessible. And finally, we also take a screenshot. And Basically, you can execute test cases like this with the Nix package manager. So, uh, so in this case, we launch a network of virtual machines in a non-interactive manner. So, uh, so no windows are appearing on your screen, but it's just text. But it it will execute everything described in in the test suite for, and see whether uh, all test cases uh, succeed. So. Um, the distributed deployment and testing features. Uh, uh, so, so we have applied it uh, to several use cases. So we have a complete cluster of uh, build machines available in our network at the university, which we use to, uh, to uh, build uh, large number of mixed packages. Uh, we manage those uh, network machines by a single expression and, uh, and one command line instruction, basically. Um, we also use the testing approach for various projects. So, uh, for instance, for continuous integration and testing of NixOS. So each time a contributor uh, changes something in our subversion repository, basically uh, uh, some test cases are automatically uh, started, like uh, the NixOS installer. So we have one particular. Uh, uh, in, in this test case, we, we create two uh, virtual machines. One is uh, a client uh, on which a distribution is installed. Another uh, virtual machine is a server hosting some packages, and we see whether the installation succeeds. Uh, also, the track um, example case is included, which I described in this presentation. Uh, we also have a very simple uh, secure shell test case. So that's basically just a test case uh, launching a server and a client and, and check whether a connection can be established. Um, we also use the testing approach for uh, continuous integration and testing of various GNU projects. So one of the interesting, uh, interesting things we do is uh, uh, we build a complete Nixt OS system uh, with a bleeding edge GWC. So every time uh, uh, a new, um, new branch has been made in the, in the main, uh, main upstream GWC repository, we build a new Nixt OS instance run some test cases to see uh, whether GLC behaves uh, itself correctly. Uh, and we have some other free software uh, project experiments uh, running as well. So, so we're not the only ones doing uh, uh, system configuration management. Uh, so uh, <coughs> examples of other approaches are CF Engine and Storage Package Manager. But the main difference, uh, if I compare our approach to their approach, the main difference is, is that they use convergent models. So basically, uh, in CF Engine, you can also uh, describe some uh, upgrade actions, but they uh, change the system imperatively. So, so that's basically some files get overwritten or changed. Uh, and in, 
in our approach, we store everything uh, in the NIC store in isolation with an hash code, so we don't overwrite or remove anything. And that's what basically uh, sets our approach apart from uh, existing group. <coughs> Okay, then I'll come to the conclusion of the, this presentation. So in this presentation I've shown NixOS itself. So that's basically a Linux distribution uh, using a Nix package manager, um, uh, uh, which you can use to deploy a complete system from a single specification. I also have shown NixOS deploy network. Uh, that basically expands the NixOS approach to uh, networks of machines, so you can efficiently uh, reliably deploy a network of NixOS machines. I've also shown NixOS build VMS, which you can use to uh, build a network of virtual machines from the same type of specification. And I've shown the NixOS test driver, which you can use to perform test cases in, uh, in, in a generated virtual network. And I have some refer references as well. So uh, NixOS has a website uh, uh, shown here. Um, so from the website you can get various Nix related pieces of software, so, uh, so uh, we have the Nix package manager itself of course. Also Nix packages, which is a collection of 3000 uh, open source packages which you can automatically deploy with Nix. We have NixOS, uh, the, the Nix based uh, Linux distribution I've shown so far. We also have Hydra, that's uh, a Nix based continuous build and integration server. So, uh, uh, basically, it uses Nix to uh, perform several variants of GCC uh, libraries and also stores everything in the Nix store. So, it's for continuous integration, it's also a very uh, useful use case. And also, DisNix, and that's basically uh, a, a Nix, an extension uh, to do a distributed service deployment. So, that's basically the same approach that I show with uh, the systems, but then on a lower level of granularity. And you can use all the software under uh, free and open source licenses. Uh, so the Nix package manager itself is G, uh, LGPL, but the uh, Nix packages collection and NixOS are uh, X11 licensed. So you can basically do whatever you want with it. Um, two other things I like to point out is, is that Nix, Nix can be used on any uh, Linux system. So you don't need to install NixOS if you want to try on Nix. But you can also use it on your favorite Linux distribution, but also on FreeBSD, OpenSolaris, Darwin, and Sigwin. Um, also, the virtualization features can be used on any Linux system uh, using the Nix package manager and KVM. So, if you find the testing approach I've shown uh, interesting, but you still want to use your favorite Linux distribution, you can also download the Nix package manager, use it on your favorite Linux distribution, and use that to generate virtual networks. That's also possible. Okay, that's so far, so uh, any questions? Okay. How are you deal with the uh, user data that is dependent on a specific version of a service or program? So for um, instance, if you upgrade Postgres uh, to uh, a later version, the database is updated. Okay, yeah, that's a good question. So in Nix, we currently don't have anything to deal with uh, mutable state in, in a proxy <coughs> like databases. So you still have to manually uh, uh, update the schema or the, the, the actual file formats themselves in order to match a new version. But uh, we have some work uh, in progress that's dealing with, that, with those issues, but uh, it will still take some time in order to get that finished. Do you have scripts now that you can hook in, or? Uh, so, uh, for, for databases, for instance, what we do now is, uh, so we basically store the, the schema or, or the dump in the Nix store, and uh, the, 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 the database servers uh, will activate a particular schema or dump on startup. But, um, yeah, that's basically the, deal, uh, the way uh, we deal now with, uh, with mutable state, but that's, that isn't, uh, not entirely the way we want it. So we also want to migrate state dynamically, but that's still uh, uh, yeah, work to be done. Yeah. I don't quite get how you can run the Nix package manager on any Linux system. For example, if you install it on Debian. Yeah. I mean, the Nix package manager it will completely overthrow everything on your file system. It no, it also time. uses the Nix store slash Nix slash store. It will store all the packages there, so nothing on your uh, host system gets, o uh, gets over, uh, overwritten. 
And also, if you want to use uh, the, the packages uh, stored in the next door, you, uh, you have to tweak your path environment variable uh, pointing to another directory. Uh, so yeah. basically, in Nix, we have a symlink tree uh, indirectly referring to uh, those components in the Nix store. And if you put that in your path, then it will use those packages. But so when you start your PC, the debian process boots your system entirely, and yeah. then you can run specific programs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can also deploy uh, Firefox on your debian system uh, <coughs> using the Nix package manager, while still using your uh, native X window system of your de uh, debian system. Okay. Uh, yeah. How do you do deal with uh, scripts or executables using absolute pods? Um, you mean that they are referring to some executable? Yeah, like like typical for for a Python script, and it starts with a uh, user bin. Yeah, uh, the, you have to adapt those scripts. So NixOS this gives you uh, runtime errors. Uh, uh, so we have encountered some bad badly designed packages which we had to uh, to tweak and adapt manually in those cases, but it uh, didn't occur that frequently. So basically, uh, auto tools based software uh, usually work fine in Nix, but uh, you have some exceptions. So. For Python, you create a wrapper script. Yeah, for Python, we create wrap wrapper scripts, for instance. So in Python, uh, you uh, so, so uh, if you take uh, native Linux executables, basically uh, a library path is somewhere in your RPath uh, field in the and that's uh, how uh, Nix finds libraries, but for uh, languages like Python, you don't have anything uh, to refer to. So then we have to wrap, basically wrap a Python program and, uh, and, and specify the environment var variables uh, like Python path to find uh, correct libraries. Uh, yeah. uh, do you do this working trick for user configuration files as well, or is it only for system configurations? Uh, yeah, we don't. Uh, so, so most configuration files are in the Nix store, but uh, there are some exceptions, like Etsy password. It's basically containing all the user accounts or Etsy hosts. Um, those files are still uh, being stored in slash Etsy because mm -hmm. there's no other way to do this uh, in a purely functional manner. I was actually thinking more about the dot files in my home directory. Oh, those, yeah, no, those aren't managed by Nix either. So you have to manage the, those user files yourself. Uh. What, what kind of uptake have you seen? Have you seen a lot of interest? Do you know of anybody who uses these in production? Is you mean the, 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 the test approach or the, the just the, Nix? The, 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 whole, the whole Nix OS. Like, you know, how do you see it playing out in, I don't know, the next six months, a year? Um, yeah, that's a good question. So currently we don't have... Uh, we don't have many users yet, actually. Uh, so, at, yeah, some universities are using it, and some small companies that I know. Um, but uh, I haven't heard anything of uh, large companies uh, using it. Uh, well, it's going, been going on for over six years now, and it's growing every year. Yeah. yeah so it's a steady growth. It's not lin. It's not uh, exponential. It's linear. <laughs> What, what about the, uh, there was some interest also from other uh, distributions last year? Was there anything picked up? Or um, yeah, so we have also been discussed on the debt in mailing list, but basically the conclusion was no. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the, yeah, there, there are all kinds of reasons they had, but uh, so one of the main things the Debian developers complained about was that we don't uh, uh, adhere to the FHS standard. So uh, FHS basically says, well, executable should be in slash bin for boot, and uh, mm -hmm. otherwise in slash user slash bin. But on the other hand, uh, it's a severe complaint with but that. But we have to violate that, because uh, uh, if, you, if I use an approach like that, we can store anything in isolation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that's not fine. Yeah. 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 yeah, so we follow the FHS as much as possible, but uh, in cases uh, like uh, storing executables and libraries, we have to violate that specification because there's no other way to do the things we want. Uh, yeah. Can the next tool deal with uh, different, completely different architectures? Yes. So, you can so, uh, so the, um, I can go back to uh, this expression. So, so you have one sp uh, special component called standard environment, STDN. That, that is basically representing uh, a set of basic Unix utilities like LS, uh, CP, also contains GCC. And uh, 
standard environment is also composed in this expression. And uh, one of the arguments the standard environment components takes is the system identifier, like uh, uh, E686 Linux or X8664 uh, Linux. And then, because that's also a, a built-time dependency, the platform identifier, the hash will also differ for if you build a component for a different, a different particular architecture. So you, could, uh, sorry. so you could, for instance, just uh, have some ARM binaries and uh, yeah. run the virtual machine on your desktop while yeah. testing. You, you can store them on the, <coughs> the same machine even. So that's what we do in our Hydra environment. So in, in Hydra we have uh, various platforms. So we also have SIGWIN, FreeBSD, 64-bit, uh, 32-bit Linux machines in one environment. And they have one web portal from which you can download build results. And in Nixtor, uh, binaries from all kinds of architectures are stored in the same Nixtor, but you can because it's reflected in the hash code. Okay, the, the configuration file, the, uh, the configuration.mix, yeah. yeah. is it a monolithic file? Can you like, do support inputs? Can you break it down? Yeah, yeah. so, so um, uh, the Nix expression language is a Turing complete language, uh, and you can use any statement from the Nix expression language which you want. So you can also divide the configuration in multiple files, uh, use some uh, list uh, operations, attribute set operations, uh, all kinds of fancy things you want. There are even some developers uh, in our community uh, actively abusing certain functions to uh, achieve some interesting results. But, uh, it also tends to go wrong so in some cases. I was thinking if you could build some kind of directory, so like, you know, if I wanted to build three boxes of progress, you yeah. know, apply the same configuration file but slightly different and tweak for each, for each machine, so you employ some kind of template. For yeah, process, uh, yeah so, uh, so in Nixo, as you can also say, say well, uh, I have some, uh, some base settings and some uh, machine specific settings and combine them by using Nix language constructs together to have them. Uh, concrete configuration that you want for that particular machine. Yeah? Uh, do you call the repository for standard packages that are compiled, or they are compiled every time you load the system? Um, could you repeat the question? Uh, is there a repository like for Debian packages, VMs, like for every packages that you just download and uh, well, what we, what we do in Nix is mainly uh, building from source. So there are some okay. exceptions, but, but Nix is mainly a source-based package manager. Yeah, I understand, but I don't want to spend like three days waiting for... Yeah, so, uh, so yeah, that's, that's another interesting feature I haven't mentioned in this presentation, but uh, um, uh, the, the hashing uh, scheme also uh, um, offers some kind of optimization. So. Uh, in Nix you also have a channel mechanism, uh, so you can basically download a, a, a channel manifest in which some pre-built uh, binaries are defined, and it's just comparing hash codes. So if you if you evaluate a function and you have this hash code, and in the manifest it says, okay, I have this component somewhere else, then it will download the component instead of building it from source on your client machine. That's how Nix deals with, uh, with binary deployment, uh, basically. There's a central service of binaries, right? Yeah, that's our Hydra server. That's what he's asking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so if you download the Nixos ISO image from our website, then that's already pre configured to use our uh, uh, Hydra continuous build server, on which you basically have all, uh, all kinds of open source packages, which you don't have to compile yourself. But yeah. Um, if you want to um, use a, a, a Nixos package that uh, but you want to, uh, um, and I know you're trying to avoid this, but uh, encode dependency data saying that I'm based on GTK yeah. version such and such. Yeah. Uh, you, you've now extracted that into hash keys, and yeah. you'll be comparing against particular hash keys. Yeah. Um, but how, uh, you know, is there a conflict uh, resolution scheme, or is there, do you have some other mechanism that you, you base along that? Um, so, oh, let me think. so, so you mean, um, so, so you mean uh, conflict re resolution cases in which you have a particular uh, application using one version of GTK and another application yes. using yes. using another. So in Nix we don't uh, in NixOS we don't use things like. Uh, 
uh, ld library path or slash etsy slash ld so conf. Hm. So in Nix, only the R path is used for looking up libraries. And in the R path, also Nix store paths are stored. So if you run a particular binding using one version of GTK, that's perfectly fine because it uses the R path to an, uh, a GTK with this hash code. And another binding using another variant uses uh, the Nix store path with another hash in it. And that's why you can safely uh, run them. So it's essentially some, some kind of static dynamic binding. So so you, st you still have uh, shared libraries, but they are bo uh, bound to the executable in a static manner. Okay. Do you, do you see ways to integrate stuff like Chef and Puppet and Nix? Maybe that they gave provided a wooden change in configuration in place, but maybe create a workload of some sort. So that people could build a Nix system using something that, that they already know and use to build something else. Um, yeah, I. It, it wouldn't be impossible to integrate existing <coughs> solutions uh, into into the Nix approach. So it's just, just uh, um, yeah, I, I'm not sure uh, about all the technical details of Chef, but I, th I think it, it should be possible. Uh, uh, the reason why I haven't done it so far is uh, because I, I wanted to stay close to the Nix expression language and use those constructs. Because if you use a different kind of model, uh, I believe uh, Chef uses Ruby or Python Ruby. 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 Yeah. Yeah, so then you basically have to translate Ruby constructs to Nix and maybe uh, some Nix concepts are back to Ruby again. And that's so we the we community then reject it. If someone said, well, I've done this, but, you know, it's, um, it, it's not very, very in line with, with how the system is designed, and so the community said, well, we don't want that. Because to, to me, integrating Chef and Puppet would be a good way to kind of get people in because I'd be more willing to try it out. Yeah. Yeah, I can sort of reapply everything here. Yeah. Right now. yeah. Well, yeah. I don't think I would reject any solution, but yeah, uh, it, it depends on, on, on how it's implemented and what, what the purposes are and also what the limitations are. But, but uh, well, integration is not uh, not undoable. So. <coughs> okay. Other questions? Okay. Did I understand it correctly that there is no real overhead, as in you don't store the same files multiple times in different paths? Uh, it depends on the, the hash codes. So uh, 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 in case, so so there are in, in some cases you have expensive upgrades on Nixos. So let's say if you up update glibc, so part, almost every package is dependent on glibc. Then you have different hash codes, and if you then install uh, a new package <coughs> use, like Firefox using the new variant of GRPC, then you have to basically have to deploy a complete new system next to the other. But if GLPC doesn't change, then yeah, well then you, you can upgrade as efficient as uh, a standard package manager. Basically. Yeah, but so for for every binary file on your system, you don't have a duplicate somewhere else. Um, no, so. So for every uh, uh, component um, built up under particular circumstances, there is only one instance. Yeah. That, that's the hashing trick. So if we, if we evaluate the build function again, and, and we look in the next store and see, oh, we already have a component with that hash code, then we know we don't have to build it again, because it's already there. Yes? Do you think it would be useful to use this for um, a multi-user system, so that every user can say, I, I want this uh, this software, and another user wants... Uh, no, that's already possible in NixOS, so uh, <coughs> that users can also install software. Uh, and yeah, basically also the hashing tr trick uh, ensures isolation, so if uh, some user inst installs a... a, 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 a some, somebody hacks the LS, uh, script, uh, ls command uh, doing something harmful uh, and a particular user uh, installs it in their environment you have a different hash code so it may not affect <coughs> other users using a different variant and that's already possible in XOS. Uh, that's actually listed as, as one of its key features that also unprivileged users can safely install the software. And does um, the size used by the different programs is accounted for the user that installs it? And if two users have the same program... Yeah, then, uh, then it will share as much as possible. And that's also due to the hashing <coughs> trick. So if somebody uses the same uh, 
instance the same uh, executable using the same glibc, then only one glibc instance is used and is shared between those two users. It also is, uh, this is also uh, happens for other types of libraries and even configuration files and executables. Yeah. Is there a way to um, also create, say, for instance, OpenSSL has a security issue? Um, is there a way to say, like, oh, I want to avoid this uh, library with this hash? Um, yeah, well, there is a very uh, hacky implementation made by my colleague, Ilko, uh, to deal with this, but I don't know how far his progress is. But uh, it's not integrated in the, in the, in the, in the release. So. But it's a good question. It's, it's something um, we're investigating and try to deal with as well. Okay, any other questions? Do you, like, how do you consider an installation completed? Like, if you're, if you're installing a package, yeah. uh, do you have any way to say, like, resume, for example? The fact that you have ash goes, could you, would that make you able to say, well, of these four libraries that we're supposed to install, actually, these two are already being installed, so I just resume and install the, the remaining Oh, you mean the during, in, in, so, in the, somewhere your, your yeah, installation is during the installation yeah. process? Uh, yeah, so Nix, basically, uh, uh, you, you have the, the path in Nix for itself, uh, containing an hash code, but Nix also maintains whether a path is valid or not. And uh, so after de deploying each component, uh, it will register it if it's as valid. But if, it, if your installation fills somewhere in the middle, then it sees, oh, this path is not valid, so I remove it, do it again. And the paths which are uh, already re registered as valid during the update, uh, well, you don't have to t touch them because they are already there. So that's how, uh, so upgrades are resumable. Uh, have, you, have you found uh, Nix with uh, Linux containers? Uh, what do you mean by Linux containers? Uh, the, the LXC stuff, it's a uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a relatively new feature in uh, It's kind of like, uh, you know, Solari, Solari zones or previous DJs. Yeah. It's just kind of a light way. Well, oh, that's right. Yeah. And I could see how, like, for example, I know people who use pipelines because you, you have to clone a root file system for you know, each of the container to you know, make it work. And I can see how it can work pretty well with, uh, with Nix. Yeah. You know, one that we yeah, what we, we currently do, do is uh, running builds in the change with environments. But, uh, Sorry, I can't hear. Oh, it's a bit of a moment. So it's a, it's a good question. So uh, I think if you, if you if you would run a Nix build in uh, in, in, in a jail, then, then uh, uh, purity is much better guaranteed. That, that's right. Um, but, but currently we only uh, run builds in change with environments, but uh, not not really in jails. But it, it could, could indeed make your build process uh, more pure. And, yeah, that's that's something we still have to look into. Uh, that's, uh, but that's a good point. Uh, yeah. Isn't there a lot of uh, data requirements when you uh, install two different versions of Firefox or you want to uh, a lot of the files are shared but then you get some hash uh, no? I, I couldn't hear the question entirely. If, the, if you install, for example, two different versions of Firefox, yeah. the, there might be a lot of the files that are binary the same in the two oh, versions, yeah. which could be shared between the two. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, we don't actually, so then, then we indeed have to uh, uh, separate instance Firefox with a lot of redundancy. Uh, although we, we have an optimization feature uh, uh, comparing files and creating hard links to similar files. That's something we have, but that's, well, it's, it, it's very time consuming to do that. That's the only optimization we have. But if binaries are so similar but not exactly the same, then you still need to have two separate copies. So you do that afterwards? Uh, well, I rarely execute this because it's so time consuming, but uh, there is a feature that allows you to use that, <coughs> if, you, if you like. But, uh, it's not enabled by default. Any other questions? Or? You really still want more questions? <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> I didn't know what to expect, but... Uh, I, I'm happy to, uh, to have all these questions and uh, useful feedback uh, from the work. So.
Okay, so thanks for sitting. So